Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Oh man, happy Mother's Day, all you moms out there. Let's give it up for our moms in the house today. Man, I wouldn't be here today without my mom. You know, like, as neither would you, right? That's the importance of a mother. And uh, we want to celebrate our moms today because our moms are absolutely incredible and incredible blessings. Um, you know, I get to witness firsthand what it's like to be a mom, not because I am one, but because I get to witness motherhood. And it's interesting because, it, for to be honest, the past few months I've been telling Beth, hey, you should preach on Mother's Day. She's like, I'll let you know, right? And here I am, right? So I'm gonna teach you how to be a mother today. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, but man, I'm, I'm excited for today. And again, a way to celebrate our mothers. And throughout the Bible, throughout history, um, and, and in the Bible, we see story after story of incredible mothers and motherhood uh, throughout scripture. And we see, obviously, if you go back to the beginning, we see Eve, the mother of humanity and to the nation of Israel, kind of the start of kind of our journey, even as faith today started with Eve. And then we obviously see Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus. And what an incredible, incredible uh, role that she had in our story and in the story of Jesus being his mother. And being a mother to any kid is hard. Imagine being the mother to Jesus. It's tough, right? Like imagine that, the pressure that you would feel. And, and we also look at Elizabeth, the, the mother of John the Baptist, who, who played a huge role in, in Jesus's journey and setting the way and paving the way uh, for Jesus to come, and we see Hannah, who dedicated her son Samuel to the service of God in an early age, and she's known for her faithfulness. And we see Sarah, who gave birth in her old age, and we see mothers throughout, and incredible roles and influence that mothers and women have had kind of on our journey, and, and, and we still read about them today, these incredible people who did incredible things. And today I want to share a message called The Faithful Mother. And like I said, I'm not a mother, and so I'm going to take everything I say from Scripture because I don't know what it's like to be a mother. I feel like some days I barely know what it's like to be a father, okay? And so uh, I, I, I want to just share a story with us. Um, to the story of the mother of Moses. And this is a, a kind of a short story, but there's a lot of power, I believe, that can come out of this story. And, and so we're gonna be going through her story today. And she has a name that, I, I'll be honest, I've never heard anyone else have this name, uh, that I've never met someone with this name today. And her name is Yochebed is their name. And it's a fascinating name. Again, I've never met somebody with that name. Um, but hey, if it's, a, it's a beautiful name, right? And so we're going to be going through uh, her story today. And, and it's, it's an interesting story because her, her son, Moses, if you know, and if you don't know, Moses was the man called by God to deliver or to save Israel from, um, from, from slavery and take them out of Egypt into the promised land. And this is the role that Moses had. And of course, at this time, his mother didn't know. She didn't understand probably the fullness of what Moses' call was or what her son was going to do with his life. But we see a moment in Scripture where, where the, his mother has to make a decision and so we're going to start this story by hearing the law that Pharaoh puts into place. And it's due to jealousy and due to fear because what's happening at this time is, is Pharaoh's come into power and he realizes that the Israel is powerful. There's a lot of them. And so he comes in and he starts uh, making them slaves and making them work really hard. And, and he starts telling the midwives, hey, like, like if, there's a, if, if someone gives birth to a son, we got to get rid of them. We can keep the girls, but the boys, we got to let them go. We can't have them because they're going to become too powerful and take over. And so we can't have this happen. And so in Exodus chapter 1, verse 22, it says this, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, Throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, but you may let the girls live. 
What a, what a way to start Mother's Day, right? How, so encouraging. This is this moment that, that, that Moses' mother is faced with. The reality of the law of the land. And I think sometimes in our nation, we sometimes don't like the laws that are being made. But I think some of us were grateful it's not this. What a, what a, what a way to, to, to welcome your child into the world. Now, the thing about birth, and I know a little bit about birth uh, because I've been around birth two times. And one thing I know about birth is it takes a long time. It doesn't just happen, you know, in a week or two weeks. It takes nine months for a child to come into the world. So imagine, you know, this is the law. And I think a part of you is hoping you have a girl, right? You have nine months of waiting, hoping that, that maybe you don't have a son. Hopefully you have a girl so that you can actually see them live nine months growing a baby to potentially only be taken away. The, this, this, this heartbreak and hardship that Moses' mother is going through over this span of nine months, a waiting game, a brutal place to find yourself as a mother. And where we're going to spend the rest of our time together this morning is to see what she does in order to protect her son and how God provided for them and what we can learn from her story, learn from her story as mothers and learn from her story as fathers and learn from her story as followers of Jesus and how we can approach the world. And so Exodus chapter two, verse one says this, about this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got, Levi got married and the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and, and, and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. You know, our first kind of thought I have today as mothers, as, as people, is we got to be filled with faith. Got to be filled with faith. See, Moses' mother in this moment, all she had was hope and trust that God would take care of her kid. She didn't have any other option. She didn't have any other choice. The only choice she, she had was to look to God and say, God, I trust you with my son. And this is an attitude that is filled with faith of saying, God, I'm going to keep him hidden for three months. Now, again, I've had two babies. Keeping a baby quiet for more than five seconds is hard. Three months trying to hide your child from the government and hide your child from the world because you know the dangers that the world is going to have. Keeping a child hidden for three months. She didn't know what to do. There's going to be a day in our lives where our children leave. There's going to be a day in our lives where our children take a step out the door. Some of us were waiting patiently for that day. And others of us were saying, I'm never going to let that day happen, right? That's how I feel sometimes with my daughters. I'm like, yeah, good luck. You know, like if someone tries to go on a date with you or something, it's going to be tough for me. Um, but it, 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 it's so fascinating, this moment with Moses' mother filled with faith. But the truth is she didn't really know what to do. What do you do when you know your child is this unsafe? Any noise or any distraction or any moment, your child could be taken away and never to be seen again. But this takes courage. See, she was filled with faith to a point of saying, I'm going to do something. I got to have courage. I got to take care of my babies. And that's one thing I love about mothers. Mothers love to take care of their babies and protect their babies. You know, we want to make sure that our kids are taken care of, that our kids are safe, that, that our kids are respected, and that our kids do well in life. We want to see our kids succeed. She makes this decision to say, I'm going to keep my baby for three months, and it might cost me even more. It might cost me even more, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to take care of my baby. Because she's not just putting her, her baby's life or her life on the line. She's putting her entire family's life on the line. Rather than losing just one son, she could lose her whole family. But that was a risk she was willing to take. 
And eventually with Moses, hiding him became impossible. But she had faith that God would protect her. She had even said she knew he was special, so he kept, she kept him hidden for three months. But eventually you got to let somebody know you have a baby. Eventually it's going to be hard to hide her, so she has to make a decision. And it's a, a moment filled with faith because hiding him became impossible. She had faith that God would protect her child even though she couldn't anymore. What a beautiful place for us to get to, though, as parents. A place where we actually trust God with our kids more than I trust me with my kids. A place where we can actually let them go like we did last week. We dedicated children to the Lord, and we are saying, hey, God, I trust you with my children. So rather than letting her child be thrown in the river, she creates a basket and places him in the basket and puts him in the river in order to be hopefully found and taken care of. See, we can see, if you know this story, we can see she probably had some idea of when and where uh, the the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, would be. And so she, she created this plan with courage and faith to take care of her kids. She's saying, I trust you, God. I trust you will provide. I trust you will protect my kid. I trust that you love him more than me. I mean, the question we have to have as parents or as people is, am I filled with faith for my children? Am I filled with faith? Do I trust God will actually provide? Do I trust God will take care of them? Do I trust that he is looking out for them? Are you filled with faith for your children? Do you trust the plans that God has for them are good? Do you have faith to stand in the middle of the storms even when sometimes your kids can't stand yet? Do you have faith to pray for your children fervently? See, the beauty of the story is she didn't know what was gonna happen. She didn't know what the outcome was gonna be. She had her hopes and her faith in God, but she didn't actually know the outcome. But she had faith. Faith that God would protect her little baby because she couldn't anymore. She couldn't protect her baby anymore. And she said, God, I have to trust you. I don't have a choice. Faith that even if she wasn't in the picture anymore, that her son would grow up to do the things God had called him to do. That's a lot of faith and trust that she had that God would do what he said he would. And I think we as parents and and we as people, we got to learn to have the same faith she had for our children. And it's hard because we want to fight, right? We want to fight. We want to keep doing these things. And sometimes the best thing that we can do is let them go and say, God, I trust you with my baby. It's a hard place to get to, but I think one of the most beautiful places we can get to as parents, see, our faith matters. How you present your faith matters. How you live out your faith matters. We need to fully trust God with every aspect of our soul and every aspect of our lives, trusting fully and wholly, trusting Jesus and trusting God to take care of them. See, it's faith that moves mountains. It's faith that brings miracles. It's faith that brings the prodigal home. It's faith. It takes faith. And we as parents, we got to model faith to our children, that even if we don't know the outcome, we know the author. We might not know the outcome of the situation. We might not fully understand it, but we know the one who's penning the story. We know the one who cares more than I do, and so we gotta trust him and have faith, the same faith that she had for him. We can trust that he's got it under control. If we go in here in verse five, it says this soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river and her attendants walked along the river bank. And when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go? Should I, there we go. Should I go find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. 
Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Great plan. This is, this is crazy, though. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Now, this story is unbelievable. This is the child tax benefit before it existed, all right? Right? This is, this is the, the, the princess saying, I'm going to pay you to take care of your baby. Microphone. Let me use this one here. Number uh, five. Hello. Welcome back. But this is this powerful moment, right? This moment where, 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 where the princess sees Moses in the reeds. She sees Moses in this, in this moment, and she goes, and she sends her maid, and she finds, they find the baby, and all of a sudden they bring the baby back, and, and, and it's this powerful moment. And then the sister goes to the princess and says, hey, should I find someone to take care of this baby? And the prince is like, yeah. What a great idea. That way I don't have to. I feel compassion, but someone else can take care of her. And the the baby's own mother is the one getting paid to do it. See, when we're in the impossible, even with our children, God always has a way to make it even a better outcome than we could have ever dreamed of. See, again, I, I can't stress this enough. We have to realize that God loves our kids more than us. And it's hard to fathom. It's hard for me to fathom when I hold my child that God's like, ha ha, I love her more than you, right? Now he doesn't say it like that probably, but he loves them more than I do. In fact, he, he creates outcomes and he creates situations and he, and he move, moves things to make sure that our kids are okay. And it's hard. It's hard to trust that he'll do it. You know, the second thought I have this is this, we've got to do whatever it takes. She's living the dream. Again, this is probably the best scenario that could have happened. I get to get paid to take care of and nurse my own baby in a time where that baby shouldn't even be alive, a miracle. In a time where he should have been thrown in the river, I get to take care of him myself and get paid. The willingness to do whatever it takes, her faith paid off. She could have just given in, right? She could have just given her baby in order to protect herself, in order to protect the rest of her family. See, the faith of a mother is more important than you know. The faith of a mother is so much more important than I think we even understand. The faith to go against what everyone else is saying to love and support your child. And I know for me, this is my story with my own mother. I had some hard years in junior high and high school, and I struggled with so many different things. But one thing I knew through the entire journey is that my mom would be there for me no matter what. No matter what I did, no matter how bad I hurt her, no matter how bad I hurt the situation, no matter how bad I hurt myself, which is often the hardest thing for a parent, my mom was always there for me. In fact, I know because my mom was praying for me every single night. Every night when I was going out and causing trouble, getting into trouble, doing things I shouldn't have, there was my mom on her knees praying for me. See, there's so much power in the faith of a mother. And I want to encourage you as mothers and as fathers, be praying for your kids. Be praying for your kids. You know what's more important than I think discipline is, and I think all of that is the most important thing we can do, is pray for our kids. And how many times do we know that's the last thing we do? Our kids making us so mad. Our kids not listening to one thing we say. Now, I'm not saying don't have a discipline. What I'm saying is be people of prayer first. We gotta pray for our kids. The faith of a parent and the faith of a mother is so much more important than I think we even know because my mom was praying for me every night and I promise you if she wasn't, I wouldn't be here. The faith that my mother had to pray for me even though in some ways I didn't really deserve it. 
There's moments where I would steal money from my mom to go buy alcohol. And a single, my mom, single mom, trying to raise a family, I'm stealing money from her. And this is the same woman who's praying for me every night when I was in junior high, high school. She loved me anyways. And I think for me, this is one of the first times in my life I experienced God's deep love was when my mom showed it to me. Not when I experienced in church. It wasn't, wasn't when I experienced going away to camps. It was when my mom loved me even though I didn't really deserve it. That's when I experienced the love of God in a profound and powerful way for one of the first times when I was a kid and my mom was praying for me. And love me no matter what. She did whatever it takes. See, it might not be glamorous. It might not be comfortable. It might not be flashy. But I think that moms have this inner desire to do whatever it takes for their babies, right? You hear stories of moms like picking up cars. It's like, that's crazy. That's a good deadlift, you know? <laughs> I'm joking. But moms, whatever it takes. Do we need good moms? I think we often hear about the fatherless generation, but we're also living in a place where there's a motherless generation as well. And I believe that our responsibility as followers of Jesus is to be parents and fathers and mothers to those who don't have it. Because some, there's some prodigal sons walking around and they have nowhere to go. They don't have a family waiting for them. And I believe our responsibility is to be parents and mothers and fathers to those who need it. Because I know how much I need it. See, mothers put their own needs to the side and so their kids can be comfortable and good. Now, if you've been a parent for more than 15 minutes, you know how wild it can get extremely fast. Like, I'm talking seconds. It goes from zero to 100 in seconds. I don't need to tell the details, but last night we had a moment like this. And it was, it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever experienced in my entire life. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Zero to 100. We had to have baths right away. You know, like, boom, bath time. You know what I'm talking about with those moments where, like, you're getting in the bath this minute. Right? That's what happened last night. It's not always comfortable or flashy, but it's important. It's not always comfortable or flashy when your baby's crying in the middle of the night because they pooped their diaper for the 10th time and you have to cut them in new clothes. Like it's not always flashy. It's not always glamorous, but it's so important. And in verse 10, it says this, later when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses for he explained, I lifted him out of the water. See, the last thought I have today is this is sacrificial love. See, I think she knew that this was gonna happen eventually, right? Eventually, eventually Pharaoh's daughter is gonna come call and be like, is my baby nursed yet, you know? I found her in the reeds, I'm taking her. This was what was gonna happen. She had to have known that it wasn't going to be, she wasn't going to be able to be her son's mother the whole way through. She knew what was going to happen. She knew she probably wouldn't be able to have him forever. And how many of you know as parents, I don't have an experience this fully yet, but eventually you don't have your kids living with you anymore. Eventually they leave and they start their own life and they do their own things. They're having a good time in Sunday school today. Let's go. At first, I thought that was the piano. I was like, whoa, I'm getting fired up, you know? Sacrificial love. She knew she wouldn't be able to have him forever. Yeah, but what? She was willing to sacrifice her own well-being to protect her son. Her own desires, her own needs. Now, this is something mothers do incredibly well, better than at least me as a father. I can't speak for you as a father. I can speak for me. Beth does a lot better at sacrificial love oftentimes than I do. Because sometimes in the night, she's like, hey, I've been up with the baby all night. Can you try it for once? I'm like, ugh, fine, you know. But I'm tired. She's like, I've been up all night though, you know. These are true stories. The times where Beth's been like, hey, it's your turn. I'm like, all right. I go in the room. 
She just won't stop screaming. Beth comes come and comes in. She's like, it's okay, I got it. I'm like, you're the best wife in the world, you know. Over, and it's funny because it's not every, it's not once in a while, it's often every night. Something that mothers do incredibly well. The sacrifice of their own needs and their own desires to ensure that their children are healthy and taken care of. That you're usually, I know, will go out for a meal and that's always the last person to eat. And I'm always the first, you know. I'm like, get, get, yeah. <laughs> like, mothers are so important and, and they sacrifice so much. See, I've been blessed with some incredible moms. One being my own mother who I know sacrificed so much in order to take care of me and my siblings. And even with a lack of sleep, lack of nutrition, lack of care, my mom sacrificed day after day, night after night in order to take care of us. And I'm be grateful for the rest of my life. Then, of course, my wife, Beth, the sleepless nights due to sickness or teething or the worst one, boredom. Y'all know when a kid's just bored in bed, you're like, come on, though. It's 2.30. I know your teeth are hurting. Too. <sighs> sorry. 2.30, anyway. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. I'm sorry. I'm quite tired today. It's uh, 2.30. Anyway, it's just funny. It is. I know. But the nights where Beth's been up with sick kids or teething or boredom or hunger. And the sacrificial love that our children receive from her, I'm, I'm so grateful that my kids get to be raised by such an incredible, kind, loving, and generous mom. And I know I'm not the only one in the room who's grateful for incredible mothers. And I want to encourage all you moms, you're doing a good job. I know you probably don't hear it enough. I know I don't tell Beth enough, but you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. I know you're tired. I know often you look at your kid and you're like, I don't even know what to do. You're doing a good job. See, the beauty is that in the same way that mothers comfort children, God comforts us. It's a, it's a promise. And in Isaiah chapter 66, it says this. It says this, I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. God comforts us. And I know sometimes as moms, it's hard. I know sometimes as parents, as grandparents, it's hard when all of a sudden there's a ring on your door and all of a sudden all your grandkids are there and the parents are out of there. It's not always easy. It's not always easy, but God will comfort you. Even if you're going through life as a single mother, God will be there for you to help you along the way. See, I know that Mother's Day brings up a lot of emotions for many people. See, I know some of us have broken relationships with our own mothers. I know some of us, we've lost our moms. Mother's Day isn't always easy, I know. It's not always easy seeing people celebrating when you're mourning. It's not always easy. But I want to encourage you that God will comfort you in those moments. He knows what you're going through and he cares about you. I know it's not always easy. But he loves you. And our takeaway today is this. The best mothers are filled with faith, willing to do whatever it takes and clothed in sacrificial love. You know, maybe we weren't modeled, as women, we weren't modeled what motherhood is supposed to be. Maybe we weren't shown, we weren't taught, we, didn't, we don't know. And I want to say, you got it. You can do it. It's not easy, I know, but you got it. I want to encourage you that being the best mother is not even about talent. It's not, it's not even about having the right words to say. What it's about is being filled with faith and trusting God for your kids. 
I know there's moments where Beth's in our baby's room just praying for her. Because what else do you do? What else do you do? Trust God and be willing to do whatever it takes for your kid, which I think for a lot of us, that's natural. It's like, "Ah, I'm going to do whatever it takes. And lastly, be clothed in sacrificial love. That's hard, but so beautiful. So I just want to pray for our moms today. And we got a lot in the room. We got some watching online. I don't know if my mom's watching, but hi, mom, if you're watching today. Let's just pray for our moms. God, I thank you for the mothers in our church. I thank you that you will comfort them when they need it. I thank you that you give them strength when they need it. I thank you that you give them courage and faith when they need it. God, I thank you that our mothers are standing today continuing to fight for the next generation. God, we love our moms. So God, I pray this blessing over our moms today. God, I pray for our husbands to make good meals today and do the dishes today and even the laundry to take care of our moms because they need it and they deserve it. So God, we lift up our moms to you today. God, we thank you for them. Give them courage. Give them strength. Give them joy. Give them what they need. In Jesus' name, amen.